Welcome to Inspiration Inc. We have a very special guest with us today. We have the man with us who is credited for creating many brands which are part of our household today. We have with us Mr. Harsh Mariwala, Chairman of Mariko Group. Sir, thank you so much for joining us thank on Inspiration you. Inc. And uh, you know, normally when we have conversation, it's generally about business and all. But today we thought we'll have a conversation about you and your journey okay. with you. Mm. So uh, I'll start with a very basic thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was reading your journey and your yeah. history and mm. right from the time when your family actually migrated to Bombay okay. and then that whole uh, Bombay oil mills, yes. and, you know, that part mm. of business. Mm. So what actually made you think that you need to do something more? <laughs> you already had a business which was running, huh. all the family was yeah. involved. Yeah. Yes. So why did you think of Marico and how? When I joined the organization, I was very young. I was mm -hmm. just 20 years. Yeah. I just finished my graduation and I joined the organization and we had three different businesses in, in Bombay oil industries. Right. You were educated here? Born I was in Sydenham College in Sydney, Bombay right. and then after that I just joined the business. I, I'm no, no <laughs> postgraduate or no, <laughs> no, nothing okay. after graduation in terms of studies. And uh, I joined the business. Um, we had three different businesses. Uh, it was completely family managed Correct. organization, my father and my uncles and there were no professionals. There were certain family acquaintances as a part of the company. Correct. But we didn't have any other professional practices like an appointment letter or mm. policies and things like that. It was that. all very and informal. Very informal and managed completely by the family. Uh -huh. And uh, to that extent there was nobody to train me, you know, I was just let loose in terms of on the job whatever you want to do explore uh -huh. so i have started visiting factories and started meeting customers and different businesses and, and one of the business was the edible oil business which was catering mainly to bulk uh, industrial customers paint industry biscuit industry okay uh, also selling edible oils in barrels and large tins uh, mm -hmm. in tankers and uh, a very, very small part of the edible oil business was in branded. So when I saw that and I said that uh, if I can convert this unbranded business to branded, the business will be far more stable, it will be profitable and sustainable. And I started traveling to internal markets, uh, started appointing distributors and saw good traction in terms of the brand. Mm -hmm both the brands and I think that's how I began my journey in in converting the business from unbranded to branded. But, but you did not meet any resistance internally within the family when you said that I want to shut the bulk business. So I think we saw the traction in terms of branded business mm -hmm. and that was good and it was far more profitable. So I think that itself was adding to, to the turnover um, and uh, I think I'd faced some other challenges rather than resistance to closing the unbranded business. Okay. And the challenges were in terms of attracting and retaining talent. Mm -hmm. Because at that time we were located in the heart of commodity markets in Bombay. Correct. Majid Bandar where uh, just to enter the office premises you, know, you would have to navigate through, through all the okay. hand carts and lorries and you know there would not be any parking place for cars. So when I wanted to attract talent from good organizations, most of them after coming to the office, before coming they would just run away because they would not want to work in an organization where uh, they would have to face uh, such Hurdles, conditions yeah. to enter the office. So I overcame that by calling people to the Willingdon Club Okay. Uh, initially <laughs> for a few meetings and if I found them suitable for suitable, recruitment, yeah. then I would call them to the office with us, create the right mindset Correct. in terms of attracting talent, saying that, okay, it is a matter of time, we will we'll move out of these offices. And I think that helped. You know, I think uh, if we have to split your challenge, uh, so there were two challenges. Yes. One was, uh, it was a new business. It was not yes. something that your family had done traditionally. Yes. And from uh, B2B, it was actually converting itself into B2C business. Yes, yes. That too for products in a market which was very fragmented and largely informal. Yes. Right? So that was one part of the challenge. Yes. yes. Pushing your products yes, and ensuring yes. that they are available. Yes. The second part is ensuring the back end and creating all these systems and processes. Right. Yeah. So how did you, I mean everybody has only 24 hours, how yeah. did you manage that? <laughs> 
So I think I am a good manager of time. I must say I don't sit in office beyond 5, 5.30 in the evening. But I think... Those you days also look, you did. Yeah, no, I've never sat through. But I think okay. you need, <laughs> need to have a look at the role. What role are you performing? Uh -huh. And if you are able to attract good talent, you know, can you empower them? Can you delegate to them? Because many entrepreneurs, I find that, you know, they are too much in love with their own business. They want to do everything, everything on their own. And if it, they just start doing everything on their own, they just cannot grow. So you need to attract good talent. You need to create the right team, build the team, create the right processes, uh, so that your role shifts from doing things yourself to getting things done. Correct. And that's a very big shift the entrepreneurs need to bring about. And I think I was able to do that effectively. I recruited talent which was better than me in that in their respective functions. So it was easier for me to to delegate and empower them. Right. But okay, so second part of it was actually creating brands like, you know, yeah. Marico, I, I mean, Safola or Parachute. Yeah. These are all like household names yes. um, and for generations they have yes. been. Yes. But when you actually floated them, yes. so what was the reaction of the trade community, the yeah. distribution channel and business partners? Did they believe in this, that it is doable in a fragmented market? See, first India of all, also, uh, I, there are two separate, Parachute and Safola cater to very different mm set of consumers. Correct. Safola is an urban centric brand mm -hmm. which is uh, catering to the health conscious people in terms of mm -hmm. uh, their edible oil they are using and now Correct. we also gone into Safola healthy foods Correct. but it was more an urban centric brand so we had to convince people that this is a brand which is good for your heart and you look at uh, not just selling the product but beyond that can you actually tell the consumer the need to take care of their heart. So we did a lot of initiatives at that time. And since then, they've been continuing in terms of doing heart care camps to bring in awareness for uh, high cholesterol, impact of high cholesterol, uh, gave them booklets in terms of how do you, uh, mm, what care. kind of diet you need to do, how, what are the lifestyle changes you need to bring? Because oil is one part of the Correct. journey, but I think your lifestyle has to change if you have to uh, lead a healthy, uh, healthy heart lifestyle. As far as coconut oil was concerned, we, I think first of all, we had a very good quality of oil. Mm. So we had a superior quality of coconut oil compared to many of our competitors. And that helped us in terms of getting initial market shares. And we got about 15-20% market share through sheer distribution and trial generation. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I think we saw an opportunity of converting market from tin to plastic. Initially, we faced a lot of problems with the trade because they were just not willing to stock mm -hmm. plastics because of rat bites and because somebody else had launched coconut oil in plastics a few years prior to us. So we actually had to design a round shape container mm -hmm. and a container where we ensured that the no oil was on the surface of the bottle. And we also placed those plastic containers in rat cages for a day or so. Mm -hmm. And nothing happened, it was all safe. And we took the pictures, went back to the trade. <laughs> and that's how we converted the market. And you know, our market share over a period of three, four years jumped up from 15% to almost 50%. So one was converting B2B business into B2C. Yes. But when you converted it into B2C, yeah. did you have this kind of uh, probably trajectory in mind that ultimately this is where you want to take the business? Because if we observe your business, yes. so you know from Safola now you yeah. have, I mean you are everywhere. So yeah. you are into health foods. Yeah. Yeah. Parachute uh, yes. today sells in Bangladesh and a yes. lot of other yes. countries yes. outside yes. India. Yes. Was that somewhere planned or it just happened? So, I would say that it has evolved over a period of time. Uh, the entry into Safola and Parachute in the initial days and the positive response we got uh, in terms of increasing sales as well as making the brands profitable uh, spurred me to say that this has to be the business. I am, my life is now going to be mainly in FMCG industry. Correct. And I want to create an F FMCG company. Uh, so that's how the consumer products business of Bombay Oil Industries, which I was mm -hmm. looking after, uh, I was able to convince the family that can you help me take this business in a new company, Marico. And Marico was created mainly to look after the FMCG business, the branded business, mm -hmm. which required a different set of skills, culture to, to succeed compared to a B2B business. Mm -hmm. And once that was done, I was very clear that we had to go all guns in terms of creating brands in FMCG segment. And we identified two broad categories of business we wanted to be in. 
which we call beauty and wellness mm. and we've stuck to that by and large what actually gives you this i would say future vision because lot of your ventures if we see have been uh, ahead of time and and they have been actually you know they have uh, created that change uh, in the industry fmcg products are one side of it yeah. then then you have something like kaya which yeah. was again the yeah. first formal chain yeah. yes. in india yes. uh, for health and wellness so so how how do you do that I mean, so i think it a lot depends on your <laughs> mindset ha uh -huh. and uh, your passions so i think if i look back at my own journey i think two things two big initiatives have helped me in terms of creating whatever you've done one is the need to think differently yeah? so we can we may call it innovation so whether it's plastics in in case of parachute or uh, any other product we have innovated for or in case of safola masala oats mm. we innovated the oats category by launching a range of masala oats true which was not existing uh, so one is innovation you know and other is the need to pioneer new things so safola and one at one level was a pioneering initiative in healthcare deployments a re brand like revive was a pioneering initiative in mm. in uh, fabric starts yes. then the kaya skin clinic was a pioneering initiative in in uh, skin care uh -huh. and of of recent uh, past just 3 months back i opened your new business yeah which, which is? is in the range of which basically we have pioneered a rehab center uh -huh. which is uh, known as aqua centric and we it's uh, it's a unique uh, business model where we uh, offer rehab services uh, on four different uh, set of issues one is all the ortho issues if you had a knee injury or if you had some other back problems and if you're not able to exercise mm. then we have three swimming pools so we actually it's very easy to exercise in swimming pools so right. we uh, ensure that people exercise in that and then we have neuro issues you know mm. which is to look after the um people who suffer from stroke or neuro issues and we also have chair lifts where we can actually put the people in chair and put them in pool and third is pediatric issues those who are suffering from down syndrome uh, autism <laughs> cerebral palsy and finally about fourth is women's health issues i am very proud that it is yeah, it's yeah, it's getting very good feedback about the same i'm sure yeah. now uh, so you know one was obviously your own journey second was the way indian economy progressed yes. and the you know the globalization happened mm. and all uh, and obviously you also went public americo listed uh, how much life has changed because you know it's one thing to be in a market where you are completely yeah. Yeah. the dominant force true, true. today you have global products here yeah, global yeah. chains here yes, yeah how the life has changed from for me or for the company for you for you and company both actually i think it's always uh, good to have change change is always constant so i think one has to embrace change and look at the positive side of change in terms of opportunities new or exciting things to do to learn and i always looked at change from a very very positive side so things have changed dramatically over a period of time also can you you know just because the show is actually uh, about the inspirational stories yes, yes. Uh, can you talk about one or two failures where where oh, actually you talk of multiple failures and not one or two and i think no so so tell me one or two which actually changed your life or changed your approach so i think first of all i view failures as learnings okay and i think every person fails and if you are scared of failures then you stop taking this so i'll give one or two examples one is um, a few years back we felt that we should enter snacks under the safola brand name mm -hmm. and um, i'm talking of 5 6 years back uh, and we identified as baked snacks as a way to move forward because snacks most of the snacks are fried mm -hmm. so if you offered baked snacks mm -hmm. then it will have lesser calories it fits into the brand safola so we developed a product which was very very healthy mm -hmm. but it was not, not so the tasty. best in taste mm -hmm. and when we launched <laughs> we realized that in a snack category taste is the most important because it is an impulsive purchase you are having a snack when you are 
all of a sudden you reach home in the evening and you want to yeah, grab something or yeah. you are having a drink in the evening want yeah. so that palate has to Correct. you people were not willing to go for a slight like suboptimal product on taste so we withdrew the product that's i think that's most important yes. any other failure that you would want so to i would say that uh, one other failure when uh, i'm talking of many years back when we wanted to go international and we were able to go international only in certain territories which were neighboring to india in bangladesh middle east because um, our main hypothesis was that hair oiling we can take it international but hair oiling as a habit had had vanished from most other countries and the desire to expand to other countries also was high so we said that can we leverage something which is indian so in that search for leveraging indian i came across a company which was based out of us which was in ayurveda but uh, selling it to the spa industry so it, again going back to b2b business model and we felt that that would give us an opportunity to sell it to all spas um, we acquired that company uh, persisted it for a few years but we were not getting traction into b2b partly because we were not in that kind of a business and partly because the opportunity was very small we sold out that business and the key learning for us was instead of going into a different business model can we identify some newer set of products where we can become market leaders mm. in hair care so we identified what we call pre and post wash hair care mm. which is basically hair oils hair serums hair gels hair creams okay. uh and we briefed some of the bankers saying that we want to uh, we want to acquire businesses we also identified ethnic hair care in, in africa uh, we identified male grooming where some brands were market leaders and we were able to make acquisitions in in egypt south africa vietnam uh, that gave us uh, entry into those so i think looking back we should have gone that route rather than acquiring a b2b business based on ayurveda and us which is you you are normally quiet and you don't talk about your uh, social activities or uh, basically the philanthropic activities yes. but you do a lot of you do support lot of innovation and yes. you know yeah. try and create that next yes. wave of leaders and all yes. Yes. can you just share a bit about that so i think it is done under two or three different heads one is under marico the csr reports to me directly though on a day to day basis we have a managing director who manages marico right um we, so we have marico innovation foundation which basically the whole objective is to fuel innovation in india and in the innovation foundation we do a lots of things including supporting innovative organizations to scale up awards you come out of the book which has become a best seller so that's one on my personal side i have currently engaged with two initiatives mm -hmm. and one of the initiatives is what we call mariwala health initiative and this is to support organizations support and fund and help them grow organizations which are in mental health and this was started about 4 years back so we are working with four organizations where we give a financial grant and in addition to that we help them and finally i have started ascent mm -hmm. which is helping entrepreneurs scale up you know and learn from each other so we have 350 entrepreneurs associated with ascent in in bombay and we have just launched our chennai chapter and hopefully we'll have about 50 or 100 entrepreneurs in chennai so tell me which is the most uh, influential book you have read or so i would say many? that uh, one book which uh, gave a lot of endorsement to what i was doing was blue ocean spaces you know okay. because i looked at spaces where i can be market leader and they were blue ocean so just reinforce my belief in in going after these businesses who is the most influential person in your life i have had learned from many people but if i had to name one i would say that uh, professor ramchandra who i known uh -huh. for a long period of time whenever i have had issues whether it's board or talent or any process or team i have always gone to him and then you know uh, he has always helped me and i am also in the currently in the process of writing a book uh -huh. uh, which is going to be co-authored by him so wow. yeah okay is there any one thing that you would like to change about your life yes lots of things but if i try to if i one thing i'm very impatient as a person uh -huh. so i would like to be patient and you don't come things. across as impatient at least yeah but you know i eat my meals very fast and you know <laughs> uh -huh. everything has to be <laughs> very instant <laughs> instant yes are you a sports person uh, yeah i play golf uh, every weekend without fail uh, i go to the gym every day so i am very health conscious so I, yeah i'm 
Who is your favorite sports personality? I would so say. it has to be in golf. So I would say that Tiger, somebody like Tiger, Tiger Woods is somebody who's a lot of inspiration. Okay, this one is tricky. But yeah. is there any one decision which you regret? Regret? Not really. I don't think so. I mean, so it has been pleasure speaking to you and actually to know the real person behind this whole success story that we have. Thank you so much for Thank giving so us much. your time. Thank, Thank you, sir. Bye.